JavaScript is a programming language we can use to make a website interactive. When we search something on Google or click a link, our browser changes. That's what JavaScript allows us to do. First, we'll use Sublime to create an index.html file with the usual boilerplate information. And we'll also add a quick button here in our body tag. And so if we save this up and open our index.html in a web browser, we see this button. Of course, when we click it, nothing happens. Now we'll create a JS folder, and so this will hold our JavaScript, and we'll just call it JS. And then back in our Sublime, we'll go over here, we'll create a new file, and again, this will hold all of our JavaScript code. And if we go back to our index.html, we can link it in a similar way that we did with our CSS. And so we have to link it to our index.html for anything to happen. And so we will go script source equals, and we'll say js slash script.js. And that's just the file path and the name, and then close that script tag. So just importing it like that. And now we have JavaScript. And so if we save this, you know, refresh the page, nothing happens. It looks pretty much the same. However, the code is set up and we are ready to add some JavaScript. And so let's say we wanted to surprise our friend, you know, with a little hidden message with our web page. And so when they first load the screen, you know, they'd only see the click me button. But when they clicked the button, you know, the hidden message would reveal itself. So first, let's make this hidden message, and we'll add a little CSS so it's hidden at first. And so we'll go p id id's hidden message, and we'll have it styling have display none, and we'll have it say you are going on a cruise, and then close that p tag. Save it up. This is our hidden message. And now, refreshing the page, it should look exactly the same because we set the display to none, so you can't see it yet. It's hidden. And so, all we need to do is write the JavaScript so that when we click the button, the message is revealed. So, we will go to our script.js and write a function that will do this. And so, to create a function, we'll write the keyword function. And this is just what you write to make a function. And then, we'll call this function reveal message. And if we needed to add parameters, we'd put them in these parentheses, but we don't need to worry about that for now, so we won't put anything inside. Then we'll add the body of our function, which is what it actually does when, you know, reveal message is called. When we say, hey, reveal the message, this is what happens. Inside of here, we'll access our document, so we'll say document dot, and the method we're going to call on the document, our HTML, you know, thing, we'll say get element by ID. And we'll give it the ID hidden message because that's what we want to reveal. And we'll say, okay, once you've gotten this element, go check out its style, go check out the display property and set it to block. So reveal the hidden text. Now we have this function reveal message, but it isn't connected to our button just yet. Going back to our HTML code, we'll add the onClick attribute and give it the value reveal message. And this is just the name of the function. And so when I click this button, we'll go over here and run this function. We'll go and get the element with the ID hidden message, AKA the paragraph, go access its style and then the display property and set it to block instead of none, which is what it is set to in here. Refreshing the page, we'll check this out. We'll click the button and then it says, you are going on a cruise. So it's like your birthday surprise. Now we just used JavaScript to manipulate the value of the display property, but this can work for any property in CSS. We can use JavaScript to change images, the color of the background or whatever based on what the user does. And so whether they click something, hover over something, you get it. While this may seem cool, CSS manipulation isn't the only thing JavaScript can do. We can also add a countdown to a given vacation so that each time I press the countdown button, the vacation date gets closer. And so when we're going on this cruise, it becomes closer of a date. Yeah, going back to our code, we'll add a button and we'll give it the ID countdown button. And so we'll say button ID equals countdown button. And then we'll set the on click action to be the countdown function. And we'll call this 10 at first. It'll say 10 days away. And we'll do button, close that up. Next, we'll create a div to put all of the styling inside of the div. And so we'll say div. And now the style and ID are on the div versus just the paragraph. So now the paragraph and the countdown button, you know, all of that is hidden. 
then we have to go over to the JavaScript to make this countdown method actually work because right now it doesn't exist. Again, we'll use the function keyword and we'll call it countdown, no parameters, and then just get right into the body of the function. We'll create a variable with the keyword var and name it current val. Its value will be the text of the element with the ID countdown button. And so we'll do document.getElementById, go get the element with the countdown button ID, which is the name of our button, and then go get its inner text with dot inner HTML. Then we'll create another variable with var new value, and this will be the new value of the button that has been countdown by one. And so we'll take the current value and subtract it by one. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is set the document dot get element by ID. So getting this button again and setting its text to the new value. So we'll do dot inner HTML and we'll set it to the new value. Save it up. This should give us a countdown and we refresh the page. We click the button, we count down, we're counting down. This is good. And now we have negative numbers. And when we count down to a vacation, we don't care about if it's past the vacation, we want it to be the vacation. So we don't want these negative values. We want it just to go to zero and once it goes to zero, we stop it. And so we can do this with an if statement. And so what we'll do is we'll set the new val equal to zero at first. And then we'll say if the current value is greater than zero, meaning it's one, two, three, four, you know, greater than zero, then we can count down by one. Because if it's zero, then if we count down by one, it's negative one and that won't work. And so we'll set the new value equal to current value minus one if there's a value to count down. So if we're at one, then it'll count down to zero. But if it's at zero, it won't count down and it will stay at zero because it won't go into this if statement. And so if the current value is greater than zero, then we'll do this thing. Otherwise, the new value will stay at zero. And so if we save this up, again, refresh the page, do the click me countdown here, it should stay at zero and it stays at zero when we continuously count down. Now that's an introduction to JavaScript and how it can make your websites interactive. Here we wrote vanilla JavaScript, meaning we did not use any extra libraries in our code. Next Friday, we'll learn about a JavaScript library called jQuery and how it can make things a bit easier to code. See you then.